take a break now meaning just pause go back to these concepts look through these concepts these, do these make sense okay these are a lot of terminologies and if you haven't had a physics course earlier and if it's only been in high school and you don't remember all of these this is going to take a little bit longer to understand because these are not um, terminologies that will just come like that so I want you to sit and kind of look back through these uh, 15 slides before you come to this okay so the measures we're going now we talked about sound we talked about pressure we talked about something called how this disturbance is going to result in a wave right and now how do we measure this pressure wave or sound wave why do we need to measure them of course we need to measure them because we want to know how we're going to understand the sound what are some of these properties when we measure a pressure wave or a sound wave that will help us understanding the sound okay so there are two kinds of measures of pressure and sound wave there are temporal measures and spatial measures temporal measures are related to time spatial measures are related to space okay now before we understand well, how do we measure these temporal and spatial measures of pressure or sound wave we first need to understand what a waveform is right because we've been talking about this wave how do this disturbance result in a wave what is a waveform a waveform is a magnitude the magnitude could be either a magnitude of displacement how far it's moved a magnitude of pressure how much pressure a magnitude of speed how fast as a function of time in a given time how much the magnitude is increasing in terms of displacement pressure or speed it's a graph that displays amplitude and time so let's talk about this right now I'm going to trace the waveform for you right here okay so this is the same picture if you remember we're just talking about the time point a pressure a particle one at five different time points a b c d and e now at a it starts at rest this is the rest position at b I'm applying an external force so it moves to the position b because of the property of elasticity it's trying to come back to rest elasticity but it does not stop there it moves further down because of the property of inertia by now you should be able to say it with me and then it tries to come back to rest position it does not stop there if the cycle goes it'll go but this one is called the waveform you see how I've traced a waveform which is exactly the same right here that's been traced in different position I've just changed so over a period of time what is the position or pressure so it's at rest point of maximum displacement at rest point of maximum displacement in the other direction rest that is a waveform okay think about it all I did was to trace one particles movement okay so this one particles movement starts from a rest position goes to point two and then because of property of elasticity tries to come back to rest doesn't stay there moves back to position four in the other direction as inertia tries to come back to rest that's one waveform okay remember this waveform because in the next lecture I'm going to talk something called the sine wave which is very similar to this which is actually this this is a pure tone or a sine wave but keep that aside remember that's a simple wave that's just one wave that I've traced traced with more movement of one particle so if I talk about a wave this is the amplitude the y-axis is the amplitude and the x-axis is the time okay that is how a wave is depicted so if I say what is a, a form that is given as a function of amplitude over time you say waveform okay that's just an example um, of displacement amplitude and time now we said we're talking about temporal measures and spatial measures to measure a sound wave right so we know what the waveform is a waveform is very 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 important to talk about how we're going to measure temporal and spatial measures of um, sound okay so if you've got the waveform then it's going to be easy to understand this okay I'm just drawing one waveform here so a period is the is the time taken to complete one full cycle okay before I do that I'm gonna go a couple slides forward and I'm going to talk about cycle before we come to that cycle is a temporal concept again 
A cycle is nothing but a movement of a particle from rest to a point of maximum displacement in one direction, to come back to rest, point of maximum displacement in the other direction, and then come back to rest. That is one cycle. So let's draw one cycle right here. If I were to trace just a movement of one particle from one type point, point of rest, to maximum displacement, to point of rest, to maximum displacement in the other direction, to point of rest, that's going to be one cycle. Okay, so this is a point of rest, point of maximum displacement in one direction to rest again, point of maximum displacement in the other direction to rest again is one cycle. Make sense? Okay. So now, since we have understood the cycle, we're going to talk about period, right? The time taken to complete one full cycle. So what is the time? taken to complete from this point of rest to this point is going to be a, the, defined as the period. Okay, Period is depicted by the symbol T. So T is the time taken to complete one cycle point starting from point of rest to point of maximum displacement to point of rest to point of maximum displacement in the other direction to point of rest. And it's given by the formula 1 divided by F. You don't know what F is, right? Let's go down and see what F is. Frequency is another measure, another temporal measure with relation to time. So how do we define frequency? Frequency is the number of cycles per second. We know what cycle is, right? Period is the time taken to complete one cycle. Frequency is the number of cycles per second. So if this was my time, right? Now, how many cycles are here, here? If I were in class, I would ask you to tell me the number of cycles we had here. That's going to be two cycles, right? This is one cycle right here. And then from here to here is cycle number two, right? Now, if my time window said this is from zero to two, and it's in seconds, how many cycles are there per second? There's one cycle per second, okay? The number of cycles per second is defined as frequency, and frequency is denoted by F. Now, we know period is one divided by frequency, but if you look at the formula here for frequency, it's one divided by period. So what does this formula tell you? The formula tells you that period and frequency are reciprocal to each other or are inversely proportional. Meaning, greater the frequency or higher the frequency, the time taken to complete the cycle is going to be less. Okay? So let's look at an example here. So, if I were to tell you, if you, you will take this as an exercise, okay? I want you to sit down, take a calculator, sit down, and I want you to calculate the time taken to complete a frequency of 100 hertz, meaning this is nothing but 100 cycles per second, right? Hertz is a unit of frequency, which is nothing but cycles per second. This is 300 cycles per second, right? Now, if I were to use this relationship of frequency and period, which is reciprocal to each other, or inversely proportional, which one do you think is going to have a longer time to complete and which one is going to have a shorter time to complete? Okay, Greater the frequency, lower the period, and smaller the frequency, greater the period. Now, this is what the relationship I want you to sit down and calculate right now. Okay, When you're doing this, I want you to calculate the period. So use the formula here. 1 divided by F will give you the period. The frequency will be 1 divided by T. So this will be 1 over 100. This will be 1 over 300. And this will be 1 divided by 2 second. This will be... Okay? Use this. And I want you to be able to calculate and tell me if this relationship holds good. Can you understand what the reciprocal relationship is between frequency and period?
So period and frequency are inversely proportional. So if the frequency is higher, the time taken to complete that is going to be smaller. Let me go here and actually draw on this slide for you so you can be able to see it. Oops, that's my stomach. Okay, so now let's see how many cycles this this is figure two this is figure one how many cycles does figure two have one cycle right and how many figures the how many cycles does figure one have that's one two three three cycles if this was my time and this time is from zero to one second I only completed one cycle per second, say that's one hertz, while I completed three cycles per second here, three hertz. So greater the frequency, for three hertz I only need one second, but lower the frequency, one hertz, I still needed one second, okay? All right, so the higher the frequency, the period, the time taken to complete one cycle is lower. So. Lower the frequency, one hertz, the time taken to complete a cycle is going to be longer. Period, longer. If this is also zero to one, my time taken to complete one cycle is 0.33. Make sense? But here, the time taken to complete is one second. Sync this concept and it's very important. You need to be able to understand what frequency is, what period is, what the inverse relationship between, or the reciprocal relationship between period and frequency. Do this exercise, use these formulas, see if the relationship holds good, okay? The next concept that we're gonna talk about is something called wavelength. This is a spatial measure, meaning in relation to space. So we talked about temporal measures, let's reiterate. We talked about the concept of cycle, we talked about period, we talked about frequency. Now we're introducing a new concept in the spatial measure called wavelength. Wavelength is defined as the distance a sound wave disturbance can travel during one complete cycle of vibration. If you have to understand this concept of period, frequency, and wavelength, you need to know clearly what a cycle means, okay? Because everything is based on the cycle. So the distance a sound wave can travel during one complete cycle of vibration is your wavelength. If this is one cycle, the distance that this particle travels from here to here is defined as wavelength or it's represented by the symbol lambda. Okay? All right? Lambda is given by the formula C over F. C is the speed of sound. F, we know what it is. It's frequency. So if you know the frequency, you can calculate lambda. If you know the lambda, you can calculate frequency. Now, by the formula, well, you should be able to understand, again, that frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional or reciprocal to each other, okay? What does that mean? I'll come back to the slide in just a second. What does that mean? That means that higher the frequency, the distance traveled in one cycle is going to be less. So let's write that. Higher the frequency, distance traveled... in one cycle is less. Simple terms. Keep these notes. Keep this PowerPoint. Write these notes that I wrote on the PowerPoint on your PowerPoint slides that I put for you. These are some things that will help you. I need you to think through this, okay? So if you look at this, start from here, that's my one cycle, right? And see how much distance is this is my one cycle. You see, almost two Cycles are getting completed in the distance it takes to complete one cycle. So that's the wavelength. So wavelength and period are inversely proportional to frequency or reciprocal to frequency. Higher the frequency, remember this, higher the frequency, shorter the wavelength, shorter the time taken to complete one cycle. Lower the frequency, so let me write it here for you. Higher the frequency, when I say increase the frequency, lower the time taken to complete it, and shorter wavelength. 
lower the frequency, greater the time taken to complete that one cycle, and longer wavelength. Remember this relationship, okay? All right, now I want you to use this again. This is an exercise for you to do, is I want you to calculate the wavelengths. We know the formula. Lambda is C over F, right? C divided by F. And C is 340 meters per second. And if here I've given them in centimeters, so convert centimeter to meter. So C is 34,000 centimeters per second. Use that. And frequency will be C divided by lambda. All right? So for the first one, use this formula and calculate. For the second one, use this formula and calculate. And I want you to see if the relationship holds good. So between 250 and 50 hertz, which one should have higher, wave, longer wavelength? This should have longer wavelength. And this should have shorter wavelength. Calculate and see if that relationship holds good. All right? There are a few other terminologies that are related to a wave. The terminologies include velocity. Velocity is nothing but the speed of an object. So an average speed of sound in the medium of air is approximately 340 meters per second. Amplitude is the maximum displacement of the particles in the medium. So we talked about amplitude, remember? In the waveform, when we talked about the waveform, time is on the x-axis, amplitude on the y-axis. How much displacement can happen, that is amplitude. When we talk about amplitude in terms of Rs, it's in terms of talking about the loudness of your voice. Okay? So, for example, if I talk like this, this is a low amplitude sound. If I talk like this, that's a high amplitude sound. So, you see the difference? The volume changes. That's because the amplitude of our voice is changing. That relates to energy or intensity of sound. Damping is the decrease in amplitude or displacement over time. Remember, we talked about damping when we talked about inertia. If we don't have an external force to stop that body over a period of time, the amplitude of that swing or the pendulum is going to decrease because of the property of damping, loss of heat. All right? So velocity is the speed of an object. Amplitude is how much displacement. And damping is the decrease in displacement over time. Now, this is an example that I wanted to show you of waveforms of same amplitude, okay, but different in frequency. So you see, they're all the same amplitude, but the frequency is very different. If I see that's one wave, and if I do that, that's two at the same time. Okay. So frequency is different. This is a low frequency sound. This is a high frequency sound. More cycles per second. Greater cycles per second, meaning increased frequency. Less cycles per second, meaning decrease frequency okay another example here is a example of same um, frequency they're all the same cycles per second but with different amplitude okay and those are possible that's the whole point of these last two slides is for you to understand that waveforms can have same amplitude same frequency different amplitude different frequency same amplitude different frequency different amplitudes same frequency okay all right to some, we talked about a lot of terminologies today. We talked about what sound is, what acoustics is. We talked basically what speed science entails. We talked about the measures of sound wave, which are temporal measures and acoustic, I mean, spatial measures. In temporal measures, we talked about cycle. We talked about period. We talked about frequency. And we said how frequency and period are reciprocal to each other. Then in spatial measure, we talked about wavelengths. And we said how frequency and wavelength are also reciprocal to each other. Okay. Then we talked about other terminologies like velocity, amplitude, and damping. All right. Now, hold on to all of those thoughts. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about some more terminologies on basic acoustics.